Right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, now we probably need to understand what perpendicular and parallel means. Hopefully you have a pretty good idea that parallel means two lines that never meet, right? They're always what we call equidistance. The best example is train tracks, right? Train tracks are the most obvious way to uh, explain parallel lines. This is a symbol that we use for parallel. Boom, there we go. Equidistant might be a new word, equal distance. So that means that are always the same distance away, no matter where you are, okay? Uh, think about uh, lines on a graph. Think about what would be a parallel line, right? What would constitute a parallel line? Well, if I looked at this right here, if I had a line that has a slope, well, see if you can identify that slope right there, right? That slope is what it is. Now, if I want a parallel line, what can you tell me about the slopes, right? How do I know that that line is parallel? It's because they have identical slopes or the same slope, okay? So parallel lines are easy. They have a same slope. Perpendicular lines, on the other hand, they are two lines that are 90 degrees to each other. 90 degrees to each other. And this is a symbol that we use, and that's 90 degrees there, right? Like a box, sort of a right angle. Not sort of, it is a right angle. Now, what would be a perpendicular line to this right here? Not quite sure if you can see it. Like, So if the slope here is one half, what would be a perpendicular slope? Some of you might remember already, or some of you might know, but what it is, it looks like this, right? Now, I've got, there's a pattern doesn't have the same slope, but it's got a related slope. And if you look at this, it goes down 2 and over 1. So the slope of this line is negative 2 over 1. Now, I'm not sure if you can see the relationship between those two numbers, but what they are called is negative reciprocals to each other. Okay, so perpendicular lines have slopes that are what we call negative reciprocals. First of all, you can make sense of if this is your original line, your perpendicular slope has to be the opposite, meaning positive to negative, or if it's this way and it's negative, then the perpendicular slope has to be positive. So that's why we say they're negative. And reciprocals means that you simply flip the number. The reciprocal of one half is two over one. The reciprocal of two thirds is three halves. Okay, so let's practice reciprocals first. If I have a slope of two thirds, what would be my perpendicular slope? And if I had a slope of negative two, what would be my perpendicular slope? I had a slope of negative or of one quarter, what would be my perpendicular slope? So negative reciprocals, negative reciprocals. This is positive, so it becomes negative. Reciprocal, simply flip it. This is negative, it becomes positive, it's two over one, so flip it. This is positive, this is negative, it's one over four, so it's four over one, or just negative four, okay? That's the basic idea of parallel and perpendicular lines, okay? The basic idea. What we need to look at now are a few questions, how we're going to use this stuff, okay? So you might be given two lines, and you got to find out whether they're perpendicular or parallel or neither. And since we're looking at slopes, what we need to do is find the slope between these two lines. So let's look at ST, okay? Let's call this point number one, point number two, point number one, point number two. So for ST, we're gonna go minus five minus seven over two minus a minus two, which is gonna be negative 12 over four, which is negative three. So your slope is negative three for ST. Okay, and now for UV, let's give it a shot. 2 and 1, right? So Y2, 6 minus 3, 7 minus a minus 2. So that's going to give me 3 over 9, which is positive 1 third. So now tell me, how are these slopes related? Those slopes are what we call negative reciprocals of each other. So these lines are indeed perpendicular. Okay? Let's try another one. Find the slope of a line to find the slope of a perpendicular line to GH. Well, if you know the slope of GH, 
if you knew the slope of GH, then you'd be able to find the perpendicular slope. So let's find the slope of GH first. So GH, right? You've got, uh, let's call this point number one, and let's call that point number two. So, sorry, there we go. Point number one, point number two. So Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Y2, three, minus a minus one, X2, minus a minus four. So I get three plus one over two plus four, which is four over six. So your M is two thirds. Your perpendicular slope, therefore, would be, that's positive, so negative, flip it, three halves, there you go. Done like dinner. Identifying polygons. Mm, well, that is another thing unto itself. Let's see what we can identify as polygons. What is this? Well, that was another lesson I was going to give you guys. Okay, so here we go. Um, what we need to do is identify polygons. Now, polygons are basically just shapes that have straight sides and they're closed. Okay, so you can have three sides, you can have four sides, you can have five sides, whatever you want. Quadrilateral basically means four sides. What type of quadrilaterals do you have? Well, let's look at these. That, if they're all 90 degrees, right, opposite sides are parallel, that's a rectangle. When all four sides are the same, still 90 degrees, when they're all the same and parallel, then that's a square. Parallelogram is when they're not 90 degrees and they have opposite sides that are parallel. And notice that opposite sides are going to be equal too. So rectangle becomes a parallelogram. A square becomes a rhombus. So that's when all four sides are the same, but you kind of pushed it over, right? And there you go. So those are the main types of shapes that we're going to be looking at. And if you want to identify whether uh, something is indeed a parallelogram or a square or a rectangle, you might get a situation like this. Let me zoom in on this, first of all. So look, if I gave you a bunch of points, like let's say this was A, B, C, D. Well, A would have been um, minus 3 and 4. B would have been 1 and 5. C would have been... 2 and 1, D would have been minus 2 and 0. <clears throat> okay, the best way to do these is to actually draw them up, okay? Now I'm going to ask you what type of shape is this? So what you have to do is find out first the slopes, draw all these lines in, and find all your slopes, right? So the slope here you can see is 1 over 4. Here it's 1 over 4, so these are parallel. This is minus 4 Right? So let's look at the, the slope of AB is equal to 1 quarter. The slope of uh, DC is equal to 1 quarter. The slope of AD is equal to negative 4. The slope of BC is equal to negative 4. So if this is parallel to that, and these are parallel as well, then we've got either a rhombus or a square, right? So now, what can you tell me about the relationship between those two? Can you tell me if they're perpendicular or not? Well, if they are, it means that this is a right angle. All sides are the same. All right angles, that's a square, okay? Well, similar thing here. You're going to be plotting some points. So this would be 1, 5, right? What you're going to do is you're going to draw it up and you're going to check. And from the graph, often from the picture, you can get a pretty good idea of what's going on already. This obviously doesn't look like a square because those aren't 90 degrees, but maybe they're the same length and maybe they're parallel. So it ends up being a parallelogram, this one. Okay, looking for the slopes of the lines, you can see it's minus two thirds, right? Minus two thirds. This one's going to be five halves, five halves. So we're just applying this idea of parallel perpendicular lines to this thing. Uh, there you go. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. And again, we will deal with more of this stuff in class.